I wanted to start using the Teensy for more than driving a little OLED display, so I thought I would put this audio adapter board to use since I have this. Right here is the Teensy 3.6 and here's the audio board. I put headers on here so the Teensy can plug into it and then I just put some DuPont cables on the other Teensy pins as input buttons. This audio board has a headphone jack with stereo audio out. It's got an SD card capability, it's got a microphone in, and it's also got stereo line in and line out capabilities. So the header pins would go in a strip along here, and Teensy would dock onto here with extra pins on the back end. So there's an I2S interface for audio, an I2C, an SPI going to the Teensy, and aside from all those pins interacting with Teensy. I've just got one of these, I think I'm using left audio out and ground out, and I'm sending it to a receiver amplifier so I can bring it from line level up to speakers. So here's the line level left and ground going over to a line in on an amplifier. Everything else is just going on the header pins between the Teensy and the audio board. It's getting power from Teensy, which is getting power over USB. And the only other external thing are these push button inputs. All the buttons connect an input to ground. I didn't know what I2S was, so I looked it up, and it's just used, it's a special bus for communicating the PCM audio between integrated circuits. It's not really meant to be used with cables, so it's best to dock a Teensy to the audio board, but some people use DuPont cables successfully side by side and hook things up to a breadboard from there. So Teensy has this audio system design tool, a web interface, and I'm only still just learning all of this myself, so jumping around, you know, turn it on and learn as you go. I came over to this interface. I don't think there's an offline version of it. I think what I've gathered so far is this allows you to set up an infrastructure, but you still have to write some code to control the parameters of all these things. So you need an input and an output and then some stuff happening in between. You can have mixers, amplifiers, you can play things from memory, from SD card, you can generate synthesized effects and sounds, you can apply digital effects like chorus, flange, reverb, delay. You can filter the audio. You can run analysis tools. There's FFT stuff here. So you need an input, an output, and stuff in the middle. So I've got this board, so I'll drag this on. This is my I2S audio interface. I'm just gonna do something basic. So an output, I'm also gonna send it out to this same thing. So it tells you here what you can do, and if there's any controls you can use in the code, and if there's any examples in the Arduino environment, it'll tell you what you can run. And I found, I don't know for sure, I'm only playing around, but you can really only wire things up here. You can't really set parameters as far as I know. I can change the name of it to make it more usable, like audio board input, but that's really all I know to do so far. So great, I have a way to get sound in, a way to get sound out. So let's say I want to make a drum sound. And let's say I also have audio, like I'm going to play an MP3 or something, or have a microphone coming into this audio board, and I want to be able to generate a drum sound at the same time. Well, I'm going to need to mix these together. So here's a four input and one output mixer. So I'll take my left and right audio into the mixer, I'll take this fancy drum sound into the mixer, and I'm not really doing anything stereo, so let's put it to both left and right, and there you go. When you're done setting up this structure, you hit export, and then it generates the code for this structure that you would bring over to the Arduino environment. So it sets up any includes, it makes a comment saying this GUI tool set this stuff up. So I have this drum, this mixer, this audio input left and right, and then the way I've connected them up, they've made audio connections with patch cords between everything. And that's really all that's generated from this code. It's more like 
header information to get you started. And down in the Arduino code, when you copy this over into a sketch, that's where you can use any special commands and control the mixer levels and make the drums sound different ways. So one of the included sketches, you go to the usual examples. Now, there's a place here called audio, but this wasn't showing up at first because the last thing I did was use Arduino Uno. So I had to go over and change my board to Teensy. Then the examples showed audio. Then I can go down to synthesis and simple drum and that opens up this sketch. So the information that we were just looking at from that GUI tool is about what this would look like. So you bring this into the sketch but then you write the sketch to actually use these things. So in this sample sketch they have four drum sounds, one mixer, they're using that same audio board then they have patch cords plugging things in. And down here in the setup, I'm not sure how to use audio memory. I'm not sure why we are going to have audio no interrupts. They change the frequency, the length of the sound, I guess, and the pitch modulation. I'm not sure how to use these controls, but by changing this, they get different drum sounds. And this doesn't use push buttons. It just loops through and plays each drum sample in a row over and over. So let's put this in the board. So other than generating sounds, you can play samples that you stored in memory. So that would be if you take a WAV file or something and you convert it over into hex information so you can put it into an array and play it back as a sound sample. That's what this block does. So if I wire that up in my example and then I just export the code, now it's got this audio play memory and on the mixer we've added a new audio connection. We have a patch cord going from this play memory over to mixer input 3. So you can play it, stop it, etc. And over in your sketch you would have to actually associate a certain bunch of memory to contain the audio data that gets played back when you want to trigger this. And to help out there's this utility wave to sketch that will go and take a WAV file and convert it over to the proper format that you can read in to these routines. So this is a Windows executable and some source code, but of course I'm on a Mac mostly, hunting around. I found a forum post where they have a Mac version of this. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't needed to. I've only been using existing example sketches, but the info is out there. And here's the example sketch I landed on with some audio samples. There's this sample player sketch and there's these audio samples for certain sounds. So just picking one, the header just makes reference to the sample and I guess the size of the sample. And the CPP file would contain the info of that record size. I guess this is all the hex info that would have been generated from the WAV file using that other little program utility. So you can make these individual sample files from WAV files using this WAV2 sketch or whatever else. You include these basic things to use the Teensy peripherals. These are the sound effects that were created with that WAV2 sketch. So these particular sounds were taken apparently from freesound.org where you can get sound effects that people upload under various Creative Commons licenses and you can play the samples from the website but if you want to actually use it but you can just create a free account and it will tell you the license. So this one is licensed under Creative Commons Zero. The person has dedicated it to the public domain waiving all rights. You can do what you want including commercially without asking permission. So this hi-hat that they used, this one has a Creative Commons attribution license. That's a bit different. So this one, you're free to share, copy, distribute, however you want. You can change it, build on it, even commercially. The licensor can't revoke these freedoms as long as you follow the terms, which are down here. This one, you must give credit, provide a link to the license, which is what we're on, I guess, and indicate if changes were made. You can't claim that the original licensor endorses you or what you're doing. You can't change any legal terms, blah, blah, blah. 
So those two kinds of licenses appear to cover all of the samples in particular. So basically, as long as you reference where you got it, give credit, as is done here in the comments, you should be okay following the license. The only weird thing is, who audits the fact that somebody uploads a sample and says, hey, I'm giving this to the public domain, did they create it or did they get it from somewhere that they are violating a copyright? You never know what's going on, but you can only do so much as a reasonable human. They're using this playing back from memory feature and they're going to call them sound zero through five. Then they have a couple of mixers because it's a four channel mixer, so you need two of them to get all the samples in and they're sending the audio out to this I2S board. Then here's all the patch cables. They want to wire up all these sounds to the mixers and then out to the DAC board. And this is that chip on the DAC board, so this is how they can control its settings. Here's some push button debouncing, setting the gain on the mixer channels. Then in the main loop, check if any buttons were pressed, and if so, play back whatever sound sample. I've taken that sketch with those sound samples and I've got these six samples, zero through five, and then I added an extra two button inputs and I copied over some of those synthesized sounds from that original demo sketch where it had those four sounds looping over and over. I added my own patch cables to bring those drum synthesized sounds over to this mixer I created. Then I added this extra patch cord for my mixer one to plug into an extra input on their mixer two on the original six wave file clips. So I've just plugged a couple of extra synthesized sounds into their mixer. So that's how I ended up with eight buttons here. These are the six wave file samples and this is drum zero and one. Sounds like disco on this one. And then we got the old samples. And then the gong, it lasts a long time. Why do I keep hitting the gong? I'm trying to let it ring out. So I'm not going to try and play a song with this. This sounds like a slightly open hi-hat. I'd rather have a closed hi-hat. So I guess that's a bass drum a single tom and a snare and uh, these buttons don't uh, trigger as cleanly as I'd probably want to be able to do a proper on-the-fly drum sequence. Starting to finally get up and running with the Teensy for audio synthesis and playback. I'm sure there's lots of fun things I can come up with now.